Okay, so now let us talk about the blood CSF barrier and the production of the CSF. So before we start talking about that, first of all let us look at the, the unit that produces CSF. So the unit, unit of CSF production. So this is a very simple unit, what this is made up of, I am going to go to that, that diagram for a second. Look here are the choroid plexus. So one blood vessel, a capillary is surrounded by the ependymal cells or the cells. What are ependymal cells? These are the cells that are lining the cavities of the brain. Remember these are the epithelial cells of the neural tube. These cells have an interesting uh, behavior and what is that? They give rise to all the nervous system tissue. They keep dividing and differentiating into the nervous system tissues. Once they finish differentiating and dividing, they become stable cell and they become the epithelium of the cavities. There they are called ependymal cells. So the blood vessels that are present are in contact with the ependymal cells. So the blood CSF barrier is really the wall of the capillary and the ependymal cell around this that is the barrier. We have to see how does that barrier function, but before that let us see the structure of the barrier. So what we got is, we have gotten a capillary, so let us say, so this is a capillary and what are these cells? These are the squamous cells here which are making the capillaries um, walls and there are no tight junctions. Actually the capillaries which are making the, which are taking part in the choroid plexus, their cells have larger gaps between them, even larger than the normal other cells. Okay, so we were talking about the functional unit of the CSF production. So here is a capillary. This capillary is of course made up of like other capillaries, the squamous cells. These squamous cells have gotten the gaps between them of course, that is the gaps through which the nutrients normally dissolve out or, or diffuse out or come in. However, one thing that is important here is that these gaps are unusually wider in these capillaries. You would see that the reason for that would be that the ependymal cells that are surrounding these capillaries have tight junctions. So even when these substances come out and leak out of capillaries easily, they still cannot cross the barrier and get into the CSF fast without going through the ependymal cells. So let me make the ependymal cells. So these are the normal ependymal cells. What are these cells? These are the cells that are lining these, these cavities, right? So you can focus here and this capillary here and the ependymal cells in this area that is what you can say we are talking about, right. So ependymal cells when they come and they come in contact with the capillary, they become cuboidal. Okay. So the cells become, ependymal cells become cuboidal ciliated. Now important thing, the, there are tight junctions between the cells. That means the cells would not allow any material other than water to leak through the pores between them. They are tightly bound. Reason for that, we really have to control the substances that are part of the blood from entering the CSF. So this side is all CSF, this is CSF. This side is blood, this is blood. So if you see the cell, ependymal cell that has become cuboidal, on one side it has got in the blood, on the other side it has got in the CSF. This is the blood CSF barrier and this barrier has to make sure that no unwanted substances go into the CSF or come out of the CSF. So the point here, keep this in mind. It is not the function of the capillary here 
to make sure what goes into the CSF or not. It is the function of ependymal cuboidal cells, they are tight junctions and they would have pumps that would allow the CSF to be formed. So, in the next topic now, we will talk about how this cuboidal cell functions, what kind of pumps are present and how CSF is formed.